Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. Um, welcome to another one of these Orchid Progress updates. Now, I've only done two so far. We did one in towards the end of June, which basically looked back at all the orchids that had work done on them in January, February and March. Yeah. Then we did another one at the end of July, which was like set two, which was everything that had work done in April. Now we're heading towards the end of August, this will be set three. I'm going to keep them in their sets because we can do another progress update then and look back, you see what I mean. Um, so this will be set three, but there's quite a few because um, this was the work done in May and I did a lot in May. So I'm going to split this into part one and part two. This is part one. The playlist, each one of these is going in a playlist. I'll stick that on the end of this video if you want to go and have a look at the other two or you can just search for them. If you just search in my videos for the word progress you'll find them. Um, anyway, I've got the camera facing that way because the light's coming in from behind me. Although I think today most of it's coming in from above. And I want to get this filmed before that sun hits that roof and it starts getting warm out here. So uh, that's what we'll do. And on the end of this video, as a nothing to do with this video, actually no, I'm not going to do it now, I'll do it another time. Um, right, so I've got my list here of the orchids involved. That's important because they're a sequence. As I worked through May, you know, I'll start with the first ones and I go through as I did them in date order. So there we go. So the first one is this little miniature Cymbidium, and this is Showgirl. Um, now all this has done, actually, is push on its new growth, which is pushing on. It hasn't formed its bulb properly yet, but being a miniature, the bulbs aren't very big. Oak leaves all over the place. Um, this was repotted, it had reasonable roots, and it went in, let me look, because I've written it all down, this went in small bark, nothing else basically, just small bark. Um, it came out of a mix that looked like it was mainly bark, so uh, that's what it went in. In actual fact there's some grow stones in here, which I obviously didn't write down in my notes. Now at the back end of the plant we have a large bulb that's still solid. Now, because this is a bit of a rarity, a true miniature cymbidium, with gorgeous blooms, if and when we get round to repot this again, which will be basically when there's no room for the new growth, yeah? Otherwise it can stay there. At that point, I will take this back bulb off, possibly others, but definitely that one, and I'll try and propagate it. I'll try and get it to shoot out. They don't always work, but um, cymbidiums have more luck with that sort of thing than some of the other orchids. So that's that one. Reasonable progress outside at the moment. Um, I still haven't moved my cymbidiums. I'm waiting for the sun to get weaker and spend less time. And then I'm going to move the cymbidiums up to you know, where the gardening's been done this year, so that they get some late afternoon sun to ripen them off a bit, because at the moment they get very bright light, but they're in shade, they never see any sun. So that was number one. That was repotted on the 2nd of May. And then number two, which is a Mazda Valia, was repotted on the 3rd of May. And this is the biggie. This is the um, Mazda Valia Cuculata crossed with Hercules. Um, this was repotted in the basic let's get some roots going mix which was small. Well actually no this one was a bit different. No it wasn't. It was small bark, perlite and sphagnum moss. This is my standard let's get some roots going mix. And at the moment I don't have a pot full of roots but there are a few that have just got to the edge of the pot. And I think what we've got here with this Mazda Valia is that the roots from the new growths grow when the new growths are a reasonable size, not at the same time as they shoot out. 
And we've got a wealth of new growths on this, um, literally loads. They're all growing on. The only thing I have noticed is the first couple, they haven't got anywhere near as big as the others. That doesn't mean to say they've finished growing, that I don't know. But they may have reduced size because of the sheer number of them and they haven't got the backup root system to push them. That's possible. Don't know definitely. But it's doing okay. I could, I really could do with seeing a few more roots in the pot. There are some hidden away there, but um, it's coming on. Um, if we get a bloom on many of these new growths at the same time, that's going to be quite a spectacle. But that remains to be seen. <laughs> uh, right, so that's that one. Number two, where's number three? Number three is Dendrobium Prima Donna. This was done on the 5th of May and it was put in a mix of small and medium bark with some grow stones. So, uh, no moss. This one's coming on okay. Um, you've got uh, the last, oh, it's actually got a bud, would you believe it, <laughs> in the middle of summer. <laughs> well, well into summer actually, so we're going to see some blooms on that. Cane that matured towards the end of last year, but didn't bloom in the spring. But it's going to have a little go now, and I suspect it will have a big go early next spring. And then we have two new growths pushing on nicely. One here, one here. This one's slightly larger than this one, but not much. They're running along together actually. And um, this one, the plant has a slight angle to it. So this one's come out quite high up, but the roots have nonetheless pushed down into the media. And we've got a good, a good number of roots in the pot. Yeah, it's a nice number of roots in the pot. So uh, I won't say it's a pot full of roots, but um, there's more than enough there. And that's coming on nicely. Strictly speaking, compared to what this plant once was, this is still in a state of recovery. But if I'd just got this plant, I'd say it was a good plant on the grounds. It's got a nice mature cane here. That's the only cane with leaves left. All the other canes are now leafless, but we have two nice strong new growths coming and a good root system with plenty of root activity. So, doing okay. That's that one. I haven't got all of these out. We're going to have to break off at some point while I get some out of the way and get some more out. So that was number three. Number four, which gets a big one out of the way, <laughs> was this one. Now, this was put in my notes as Bratonia Shelob Tolkien. We have since discovered that's not what it is. And at the moment, I can't remember what it is, but you'll be getting pop-ups with the names. Um, now, this was repotted on the 8th of May, and this went in small and medium bark with some perlite. There's actually quite a lot of perlite on this. Um, the new growths where the... Um, Spikes are coming from, so I'm not off camera. <laughs> Just looking at the plant instead of what I'm doing. Uh, well, both. Um, the two new growths have produced two spikes each. So there's only two new growths blooming, even though there's blooms all over the place. Um, they don't last a huge amount of time, but my hope was that all four would be open at the same time. They might just make it. I believe this spike was first, and I believe these are just starting to change colour. When they change colour it normally means they're going to go. Um, but it'd be nice if all four were open at the same time. Um, massive roots coming off of those new growths and those have got, this is a, an opaque pot um, so you can't really see the roots very well but they are there and both the new growth and the, back, the bulb behind it have produced quite a lot of new roots. And they've all gone down in the pot, so it's a well-rooted plant. So doing okay. Now I'm going to put that on the floor so that I've got some room for stuff that we haven't got out yet. I'll stick it over here. Right. So that was that one. That was number four. Number five is Prosthetia radiata, and that's up here. So I can get at that. <laughs> 
Uh, it's one of these that uh, doesn't always want to come out of the black pot, but it's come out quite easy this time. Oh, jolly good. Now, this one is one of Derek's plants, this is. Um, where are we up to? This was done on the 11th of May and it went in small, a mix of small and medium bark with some grow stones. And it's gone into a shallow pot on the grounds it is a relatively shallow rooter. Um, it's growing a lot of roots at the moment. There's a lot of new root activity going on here. And that root activity is, is being generated by the two new growths. One here and one directly behind. So these two new growths, growths are pushing on nicely. The previous three new growths are all in bloom. Um, so we have various directions of growth going on at the moment here. So, uh, yeah, it's doing okay. And it is my most highly fragrant orchid by a long way. In fact, holding it here now, it's starting to get overpowering. <laughs> so put it down. It really is a strong fragrance. Pleasant, don't get me wrong. But, you know, some find it a little overpowering. So it's doing okay. You know, the new growths have pushed on. It's come into bloom, so repotting it didn't affect the progress of the spikes, which is normal, quite honestly. I've never had much trouble with that. The only time you might get trouble repotting when you've actually got a spike is when the buds haven't opened yet, but are about to open. So they're on that break point. You can sometimes get blood, blood blast, bud blast on that. But as main, quite honestly, that's mainly on Phalaenopsis. I don't tend to get bud blast anywhere else. So if you have a need to repot, I'd always say just get on with it. If there's a need, not just, you know, any old, you know, like your media's gone off, roots are starting to go, you've just bought it and the media's absolute rubbish. Those need to repots. Don't worry about the blooms. Save the plant. <laughs> Save the girl. What was that from there? Right? right, that's that one. And the next one's not down here either, so I'm going to find out what the hell that is. That was number five, wasn't it? Prosthetia radiata. Probably not called prosthetia anymore, but as they already changed the names around several times, it may well come back round and be a prosthetia again one day. They really will not leave that lot alone. So that was number five. Number six, right. Number six is Cymbidium Jamie Red. Now this was done on the 16th. Oh God, that's heavy. So they had the hose on them this morning, so it's absolutely, it's very wet. But we, we, we haven't got any rain forecast, and I have to bear that in mind outside. So they don't get the hose on them every day. I keep track of when they got the hose, because obviously they get an awful lot of water goes through them. But they've all got pretty well draining stuff. They're not gonna get waterlogged, but this is heavy, so this is very wet at the moment. So this won't get any water for a couple of days now, but it's outside with breezes blowing over it, large rates of evaporation, and we've got warmth at the moment. We're probably gonna get up to 24, 25 degrees. I know some of you are gonna say that's not warm, that's winter, <laughs> but for here, that's warm. Um, right, so what did we pop this one up in then? Where are we? Oh, Jamie Red. This went in small bark with some perlite and some of the old mix. So this was one of those cymbidiums that was obviously in a peaty type of mix. And um, whenever I repot one that's in that, that, you know, there's nothing to do with me, I don't pot them that way, I always use some of that old mix so that the transition from the roots is not quite so dramatic. So that's what ha happened with this one. Now this one has not got any sign of spikes yet, um, which is reasonable. This one was the last cymbidium to get repotted, I believe, and the reason was it was in flower. So if this got repotted in May, it means it went out of flower in May. So this is a very late bloomer. Now if it's a late bloomer, 
then we don't worry about the fact that the two nice new growths are nowhere near mature yet because it's got plenty of time to do so and also plenty of time to decide to spike. I'm hoping that both of those new growths will get spikes and maybe more than one. Who knows? It's a strong plant that had good roots but two new growths pushing on but nowhere near mature yet. They will get to maturity obviously before, um, well, <laughs> probably during the winter actually. Right, that's that one. I'm going to do one more and then the rest will go in part two. And the next one is Hercoglossum. Now this is, this is a biggie, but it's a biggie because it's straggly, not, not, not bulk, if you see what I mean. Um, oh. We've still got a few buds to go on this, so it's not totally finished blooming. It's been blooming a very long time this year. Lovely little blooms, very attractive. And a very straggly plant. There's a reason. We didn't grow anything last year. So the long canes from last year that would be fully leaved are not present. So we've mainly got deciduous canes left. Yeah? Well, that's, that's just the, what happened last year. We didn't get a very good year. Um, the leaves that we've got are quite old. They're, they're not on new canes. So this was taken off a mount because it was doing really badly and I thought I was losing it. Put in a pot. So this will be the standard mix, I suspect. Where are we? Small bark, perlite, sphagnum moss. That was a good guess, wasn't it? And we now have greenery on the top of the pot. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven new canes starting. And they're between two and three inches long, coming towards the end of August. This is one of the ones that I normally keep growing through the winter but considering we didn't get any canes to grow on through the winter last year, <coughs> I'm hoping this one will be okay this year. Now what we do have, which will come off the plant one day, are these. My Hercoglossum has never grown kikis before. And there are several. I'm sure I saw several. <laughs> Perhaps it was just one. Oh well, there's some there's some roots there with a tiny little shoot, but it is a, but it is a kiki, so that's two. Looks like there's another one coming there. Three. Some of them are tiny; they'll need you know time to grow on. So some kikis. Very unusual, first time ever on this plant, and a lot of my dendrobiums have done that that haven't done it before. Combination of things: total disruption, moving house, me not get getting my head round in the environment, a very unusual growing season last year, and a poor winter for the plants. The com combination of all that, I think the stress decided them, you know, they decided to push out some kikis to try and save themselves, if you see what I mean, because they were under stress. This is growing some roots, but most of the new roots are going to come from those new canes when they get going a bit better. But we've got new growth, that's the important thing. And my job now is to keep those canes growing. So this mustn't dry out. And um, yeah, you've got, you can see there are some new roots down in the pot. Not many, but they're coming. Right, so that's that one. And that now has to live on quite a large portion of shelf all to itself because when it was on a mount it just hung down. Well now it's awkward because all of the canes are here so when it's on a shelf obviously this is the bit that hangs over the edge of the shelf where are the canes going to go? I think the new canes are going to head in the opposite direction which is going to make this plant twice as big and very very clumsy. So somehow I've got to try and get these new growths to follow the path of these canes and not head off in the other direction. But they're too short to start worrying about that now, but I will need to do that soon. What do I do with the black pot? Oh, it's already in it. 
Right, so that's part one. Um, I will do part two, I will film soon, and it will probably be Saturday's video, because it'll fit in between things then, Sunday chat and Project Orchids. So uh, yeah, we're up to number seven. So things to come, we have got Dendrobium Lindleyi, the Rankavola David Saunders, Sanders and BC Make if they're still alive, I haven't checked lately. Um, where are we? Number nine, Miltonia Flavescens, the Revenge of Inci. Inci, sorry. Um, <laughs> it, it's a joke that goes back to when I got the plant. <laughs> and um, then that would be number nine, wouldn't it? And then two number tens done on the same day. Dendrobium harveyanum and Dendrobium primulinum variety laos. So those will be the ones in part two. Okay, I get a lot of requests for updates. How is so-and-so doing? How is this doing? Did that one survive okay? I get these questions sort of almost at random and I thought collectively this is a good way to deal with all of those by doing these progress updates, eventually everything that's had something done on it this year will be in a progress update, without exception. They'll all get covered in this sort of three month rolling cycle. So that, you know, that was the stuff that was done in May. When we get towards the end of September, we'll do the stuff that was worked on in June. You can see it's a, roll, a rolling thing, so that, that's, you know, that, that's what we're doing. And who knows, next year's Project Orchids might be along these lines because the Project Orchids as they are are not working as well as I want them to. So uh, they need, it needs to change dramatically or disappear altogether, which I'm not sure I want to do. But we need a totally new idea for that and something along these lines might be it. We shall see. Um, anyway, thanks for dropping by. If you're not subscribed, it would be nice if you did so. What do you mean you're not subscribed? Come on, I will find you. <laughs> and don't forget the old thumbs up, it's appreciated. As are the comments. Every comment gets something. You don't get ignored on this channel or on my other two channels. If you leave a comment, there will be a response, even if it's only thanks, you know. So uh, we don't ignore like some of the bigger channels do, and some of the smaller ones actually. There's either a heart or a comment reply to uh, everything that's left, so uh, you don't get ignored. And there's often questions in the comments, and I do my best to answer them in the comments, or sometimes you even get a video out of it. Who knows? So uh, there we go. Anyway, thanks for dropping by. See you next time.